Hey everybody, Patrick here with the Colorado Mountain Club's Youth Education Program. First off, thank you so much for tuning into our online resources. Uh, it truly means a lot. Uh, and I'm here today to bring you a really fun lesson uh, or an activity that you can do at home, uh, which will be teaching you about one of my favorite topics, which is maps. All right, so before we get really diving into um, this lesson here, there are a couple new terms, potentially new terms, uh, that I'll be using throughout this lesson, okay? Uh, that first term is going to be topography. So if you haven't heard that word before, I want you to say that right now. Topography. Great. So topography is we have a lot of people that study maps, make maps, uh, read maps, right? All of the above. But topography is really just how we represent things that are in the real world on a map, right? Um, so we need maps when we're navigating. Uh, we need maps if we're going to somewhere new. Uh, and we want a really good idea of what we're going to be encountering when we enter the area that that map is representing, okay? And there are a lot of methods that topographers use to show what some of those natural and unnatural features on a map are, all right? So a few natural features that you might encounter on a map would be like a mountain, maybe a river, maybe a canyon, maybe a valley, right? These are all natural things that I did not make, you did not make. Uh, but there are some unnatural things you might encounter on a map. Maybe a building, maybe a school, maybe a road, all right? So these are man-made things, but still they exist in that area where that map is and they need to be represented, okay? So topography is just how we represent those things, okay? So that's the first term that you might be hearing throughout this lesson. Uh, the second term, which might be new to you, is called contour lines. Uh, so I want you to say that word at home right now, contour lines. Great. Now a contour line is going to take that even a step further, okay? And maps, they're not in 3D. Well, some of them can be, but for the most part, when you get a map, you get a piece of paper, all right? It's a paper map. It's flat. So I want you to think, maybe you're a bird, you're flying over um, the area where you're going to be making your map, and you're seeing mountains, you're seeing buildings, you're seeing roads, all right? And you're going to go home and you're going to draw that map. Um, but how do you represent those things that you saw in 3D, like that mountain, on a map? And the way that we do that is with contour lines, okay? So this is going to show you in person, on a map, what that feature in 3D is going to look like, okay? And you're going to learn more about contour lines through a really fun lesson that we're going to be doing here, okay? Uh, so if you don't have these object, objects, you can just follow along. But hopefully you have some of these things at home. Uh, and you can actually do this experiment or this lesson with us, okay? Uh, so the first thing that you'll need is some Play-Doh. You'll need a piece of paper. I'm holding it down with rocks because it's really windy out here. I've got a box of um, colored pencils, but really all you need is just a pen or a pencil that works. And then the last thing that you need is, and I don't even know if you can see it, but I've got some fishing line there. Um, and you need about two feet of fishing line um, you know what else would work is like some thin, like decorative wiring, anything that you could easily cut through the Play-Doh with, okay? Maybe if you're using wire or if you're, um, your kid at home is a young one, uh, you might want to help them out with uh, this portion of this lesson. Uh, but that will make more sense as we dive into it here, all right? So you don't need too much, uh, and you're going to get a really fun activity learning more about contour lines, okay? All right, so hopefully you can all see the area that I'll be working at, and you have something similar set up at your house, this paper, colored pencil, I've got my fishing string, and my Play-Doh, all right? Uh, and first things first is we need to get that Play-Doh out and play with it a little bit. And since we're going to try to represent a mountain today with our contour lines, that new word that you learned, what we're going to do is we're going to make a mountain, all right? So all mountains have a high point, the summit, right? The peak of the mountain, and they also have a wide base. So let's see how I do here. Oh, all mountains have a good name as well. So you can think like Mount Everest, Long's Peak, Pike's Peak, Capitol Peak. They all have good names. So come up with a good name for your mountain. I'm going to call mine... Mount Hank. I'm just going to write that. Mount Hank. I'm calling it Mount Hank because my dog's name is Hank. 
I don't know if that's a good name or not, but that's the name of my mountain, all right? So hopefully you can see this. It kind of looks like a mountain. I don't know. Maybe yours looks better at home. Um, but to start to represent Mount Hank, what we need to do is take this 3D object, the actual Mount Hank, and we need to start slicing it down, all right? So I want you to start at the peak. And parents, if you're helping along, just we're cutting off about maybe a half an inch segment there, a quarter inch segment uh, at the peak. And then I'm kind of just laying them out in order. Uh, with this one jar of Play-Doh, I'll probably end up with about five or six slices, right? Um, and then I'm just going to be putting those in order as I go. So hopefully you can see all of them there. But what I've got is I've got my peak and I've got each layer all the way down to the base of Mount Hank, okay? And now we need to draw these on our map or our paper so that we can represent Mount Hank. And all I'm gonna do is put these to the side again because I kind of want this in the middle of my paper. It doesn't really matter where yours is, but I want to have mine right below where I put Mark, Mount Hank. I'm going to pick a color. Ooh, I like this blue. Again, it doesn't matter what color pencil you use, regular pencil, pen, anything will work. But what I'm doing is I'm starting with my base, my biggest slice, right? And all I'm doing is just outlining that cut of Play-Doh. And then when I'm done, I'm going to take that off. Again, put it to the side. And all I'm going to do now is just go in order from largest to smallest and trace every one of my Play-Doh slices inside of the next one, all right? So I'm taking my next largest piece or slice. I'm putting it inside of my first one, my first outline, and I'm going to outline that again, okay? As I'm going, I'm kind of reconstructing Mount Hank over here just to keep things organized. So I'm just going to keep going, largest to smallest, tracing inside of the next circle. Ah. All right, so there I've got two Mount Hanks. One is the original Mount Hank that I've reconstructed, right, which is in 3D. The other Mount Hank is on my paper, and it's made up of all of these circles within each one, and it's showing you, not in 3D or in 2D, what that 3D Mount Hank looks like, okay? So these lines right here are those contour lines that I was talking about, okay? So I want you, maybe you have a map at home, a topographical map that you could get out and you could find these. Maybe you could find a mountain, something that looks similar to this and it'll probably be labeled as a mountain. But this is the way that topographers or map makers show 3D objects on a 2D map, okay? So these are these contour lines. All right, so that was my activity for topography and contour lines. I hope you learned a little bit more about one of the skills uh, that goes into map making. You can now consider yourself a map maker uh, or a topographer, and you should continue to make some more mountains, uh, name them, 
make some contour lines, slice them up, and put them on your paper, and maybe you can make your own map at home. Uh, again, thanks so much for using our online resources. Uh, hope you're having a wonderful day, and we'll hope to see you in the future. All right, bye-bye.